This is uh, a new gallery opening that we're gonna be talking to our artists about. It's called Observe and Report, Evidence of the Day to Day by Day. And we have Anne E. Lawton with us today. So we're very excited. She's gonna talk about her exhibit and uh, why she did this exhibit and what's motivating her. Great, thanks so much, Edie. Hi everyone, my name is Ann Lawton and I am coming to you from my academic office on the campus of the University of Wisconsin River Falls. Uh, I'm an art educator, I'm an artist, and I'm a registered art therapist. And so it's been a really exciting opportunity to be able to uh, come to Marshfield and be a part of the Chestnut Center for the Arts and to install this show, which um, is something different for me. I'm a mixed media artist who usually focuses with drawing, painting, collage together. I do have formal training in printmaking and photography, uh, but over the years have really gravitated towards the mixed media content. So the work in the gallery right now is something a little different. It's still almost like collage and mixed media in a way, but this opportunity uh, with Chestnut was a way for me to display work that I've literally been collecting over the years. So this work focuses on small moments and small objects and small observations to give my everyday experiences um, a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose, a sense of reflection. And so as we're talking about the work and Edie's going to show us each piece uh, uh, bit by bit, uh, hopefully my intention is that uh, audiences and viewers will be able to connect or relate or find their own understanding and meaning and also find opportunities for themselves to go into their everyday lives to find moments of reflection and connection with objects and their own art making practices. Wonderful. So Anne, if you could speak to us about our first uh, installment here that we have. Right. Uh, thanks so much. So th this first piece, I can't help but laugh because it's been a long time in the making with this. And um, to those who may just say, I, this is art. And I would agree. Sometimes uh, even the simplest, most ordinary objects can transform into uh, art, uh, which is questionable at times, but these are all of the fortune cookie fortunes that I have held on to and collected since 2007. Wow. And the piece is titled Sesame Chicken. Um, the two center pieces, the larger pieces are Sesame Chicken 1 and Sesame Chicken 2. And then the other uh, adjacent pieces are just little co collections of thematic um, themes found on fortune cookies. And so the reason why it's called sesame chicken is that's usually what I order when I go out to a restaurant and it's on the menu and after a meal, get a fortune cookie. So um, they're just interesting observations that take on new shape and meaning when, when in the context of that point in time, a certain meaning can change with experience. And so me like laying all these out on my, uh, my studio table and just laughing at some of these where the, the meaning and change, uh, meaning changes over time or what my needs are. But I know that everyone who has experienced going out to dinner and having a fortune cookie can potentially relate to this, but to collect it over time as different understanding and meaning for me as an individual, as an artist and as a human. So I hope that taking the time to read them and see maybe why I put certain fortunes next to each other, it's almost as if it becomes its own version of magnetic poetry where they inform and respond to each other with different relationships, so. What I found is I was looking at them, um, they're so tiny, you put your eyes right on it and I'm glad you left the room vacant so that we can get right up tight and close to the art. And it is fun to read these because it's like that's pretty general but yet it can appeal to me and like you say as the years go by it can have totally different meaning yeah, exactly I noticed, yeah. I noticed some were torn a little bit and then maybe in your purse for a while before it actually took them out <laughs> yeah exactly so very good we're going to move on to our second installment and uh, this one I find interesting we've been coming around Yeah, this uh, this work, um, again, something I would have never uh, really done in any other traditional art show that I've applied to or been a part of, but these are two different shadow boxes filled with uh, lipstick and lip products since 2017. 
Um, maybe this says more about me as, as, a, as an individual that I uh, compulsively buy lip product, but also it connects to the other piece that is next to it, which we'll, I'm sure, get to. But also the artist statement uh, under this piece, uh, I'm, I'm very proactive with what I consume and that I'm aware of, but uh, I explained that the FDA uh, states that lip product and makeup in general should be disregarded from after every six to 12 months because of the, the breakdown and disintegration of product and materials of um, micro um, organisms growing and just the frequency of how much I wear lip product. Um, and I just like variety, but I think uh, the title is telling too of certain attitudes perhaps um, that I contemplate within my artwork, uh, specifically within the show about sustainability and consumption. And um, the title of this piece is Innovation Drives the Free Market. So all of the lip products are similar in shade and color yet uh, I amass so many of them, which is commentary on um, perhaps a little bit of capitalism, but also me as a consumer and me as someone who wears makeup. Well, and when you look back on what used to be in style, I always enjoy looking at old movies where women have a whole different face look, you know, and how we've changed that. And yet we come back, there's still the retro look. Absolutely. And, uh, and it's nice to bury it as well. So yeah. um, I'm finding it very interesting that the lips and, and that's a big thing with you as lip products, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I made a vow to myself right before the pandemic happened. So probably about February of 2020, I made a promise to myself not to buy any more lip products for the rest of the year. And it turned out not to really work because I mean, for about four or five months, uh, didn't go anywhere didn't buy anything. And then the, the acceleration back to normal for fall of 2020, um, that lip products and makeup provide a sense of comfort or security for me in my, my various positions of teaching. So even if I'm wearing a mask, I still want to wear lipstick because it makes me feel empowered, even though no one will see it. So I found, especially with the anxiety of going back to work and being, being back in person, I felt like I needed it like a security object. Interesting. And yeah. that, that brings up the whole topic of why we wear makeup to begin with. Yeah. Yes. The adornment is. So hopefully our, our visitors to the gallery will kind of think about that, take a few minutes to reflect on that. So we're going to move on. And that's kind of with the same topic. So if you want to talk about it. Look sure. This is it. And this does fall under the discipline of what would be described as perhaps found objects or, or, or objects seen through the lens of understanding and aesthetic presentation being that these are face up fa face cleansing wipes or facial uh, makeup removing towelettes. And in January of 2020 began to notice um, really taking the time or, or just stumbling upon like taking that towelet to my face at the end of a day and noticing that there's this unique abstracted non-representational kind of blending of colors as if it's watercolor or its own painting. And I had the impulse to just start collecting them and didn't understand why at the time. And then again, March, 2020 happened and wasn't wearing makeup and was stuck in the house and just kind of cleaning out and going through things and discovered all of these towelettes collected from January to about mid-March and they presented a unique, almost like a visual diary, even though there was no writing, I could identify each day in a, in a strange way and understand the experiences that I felt. And there was one markedly where, um, and maybe overcompensated with how much um, eye shadow I had put on. And that was because I was entering a meeting on a specific day where I felt like I needed to really flex my, um, my personality or really show up in a way that uh, said, don't mess with me, I'm a strong, powerful woman, uh, but why do I feel like I need to wear makeup to do that? Or how does my visible uh, aesthetic experience or appearance influence how I want others to perceive me? So it became this psychological and, and, and kind of gender norms and beauty standards narrative that I kept 
coming back to and continue to save these towelettes. And so this opportunity at Chestnut, uh, I was like, I want to display these and, and kind of just put it out there. And so this is that for, this is the first time this piece has been shown and it is different than maybe what has been in this gallery before. And it's also different for me because it's the first time I've shown work like this. And it's just a beautiful piece to look at actually with all of the shades and the colorings. And, and like you say, it changes gradually. You probably use a week of the same lipstick and then another week you change your colors and more yep. burgundy or red. And it, it's just, did you hang them in a particular way so different parts would show? Just That's a really great question about display. Um, you know, playing with it uh, outside of the gallery, um, was just trying to get the most and what kind of fit thematically and somehow came across the way that they're laying right now. They almost appear to be like their towels hung on a hook in the bathroom. And yes. that plays off that towelette notion. And then using dressmaker push pins that really emphasize that feminine quality or that delicateness. Um, but even as I described to Edie and, and other members at, at the Chestnut Center of the Arts, my fingers got physically like the, the sore after pushing them in. There's this delicacy and then this un, un, underlying kind of pain that goes into this idea of aesthetic and beauty and performance, which yeah. is essentially uh, what this piece aims to explore. Okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we're going to turn it around and we may have to change the lighting a bit. I think we're good yet. Okay, we can leave the lighting as it is. This is a partial installment of what you have on the wall and we'll talk more about it later. But if you want to share where, where this is and what this is about. Yeah, this uh, piece is uh, uh, a collection of smaller pieces entitled Breathing Through Line. And so as an art therapist and as an art educator, this is a prompt or a directive that I would use with art therapy participants or students to slow down, to check in, to ground oneself. And so the practice of taking some type of media, in this case, with these little swatches on the wall, it's watercolor, and make a mark on an exhale of breath. So it's like breathing, but you're able to see the evidence of that. And Again, with this prompt technique to usual output, visual expression to ground body and mind, I found that uh, in summer of 2021, working 12 months a year within my various positions, um, I was becoming more and more uh, stressed and inundated with the reality of an ongoing pandemic where I was still being asked to perform and show up in person and with various uh, competing values. Science and evidence. Okay. And so in order to go with it, I had to employ a reds a week from, I believe the start date on there, there's there's little date stamps on these. Yeah, July 5th. Uh, is July 5th or 6th. Okay, so for five minutes during lunch, I would employ uh, my watercolors on these watercolor pieces of paper and do a breathing through line exercise. And it has accumulated since then in this consistent way, it's still in progress. So I got back to work. Um, today is my first day back after taking a week and a half off to install, have the reception, and then I was at a conference. So I'm doing this activity consistently and I'm hoping to have a whole year. Okay, I don't know if you mentioned how many minutes you spend on each of these, did you say? I don't think I did, but at least five. five uh, and sometimes I want to continue, so it evolves into 10, but even I'll set a timer for five minutes on my phone, so I really get the most of it. And what I find about art making, no matter how tired I am or frustrated or uninspired, I'll set a timer and the timer will go off and there'll, there'll be some days where I'm like, oh, thank goodness this is over. I can be done with this. And, but other times I find that of course, when I engage in it and give myself that opportunity, I, I, I settle down, I find that flow and I'm able to uh, continue and extend that creation period. Well, I was going to say this, it, does it lead into longer meditation as you go and you have to, oh shoot, I got to get back to work <laughs> kind of thing. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, a lunch hour, I tend to take 
like a half an hour. If it goes the whole half an hour, that's fine. <laughs> okay. We had talked uh, when you were here for the opening, you talked about mindfulness. Um, I don't know, do you want to speak to that at this point or did you want to save it for when we get to your, your other installation? I but think I, I'll wait I, to the last one, yeah. Yeah, good, because I think that's a real important point. I think we can all learn from that. So we're going to sure. move on and uh, we can maybe so we're going to fix the lighting here so we can actually see this is. And this is interactive. So tell us about this in regards yes. to what we just talked about. Yes, so I offer anyone who shows up to the gallery to engage in this practice of breathing through line. And underneath this large piece of paper, you can find uh, dual tip markers as well as um, instructions or kind of prompts to help guide you through it. So you can uncap a marker and you can make a mark however you want to do that uh, on the paper with every exhale and try to do that a few moments or even set your own timer to do that. And so by the end of this installation and exposition that uh, there'll be this community art project that will uh, exist and layer on top of each other breath and line and that will be that will be home to uh, the Chestnut Center of the Arts. This will stay with y'all. This is a community made art piece and it should oh. stay within the community. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just, I just help facilitate, but it's your community and the art should stay with you, so. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I wasn't aware that you were gonna leave this with us. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the colors change and what people are gonna put on there. That's yes. great. Um, uh, the other thing I mentioned to you before was your choice of colors, each of these, uh, pages has a different kind of hue, a different thing. Is that dependent on your mood? You see, you just grab whatever comes to you. As far as I'm going to move you to the other one here, and we'll take a look at the more recent ones. Um, yeah, I think it, it might be easy for some people to want to prescribe meaning to color. Um, I try not to overthink it. Uh, I, I go with my intuition um, and I think that color is sometimes a personal choice, but often it depends on just the accessibility and what's easy and what, what honestly on the watercolor palette, what, um, what's most available. Uh, um, so, I mean, there are some that are influenced uh, by mood and, and state of mind, but often it's just an intuitive uh, choice. Okay, so if the green pen is closest, that's what you'll use that day. <laughs> yeah, yep. Okay. All right, well, we're going to move on. We have one here with uh, envelopes, which are very interesting. I find this to be a real possible key thing and, and uh, your reasoning behind what you did here. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I'm, I'm in my uh, mid to late 30s, but I am, you know, growing up with uh, the advent of uh, email communication and text messaging. I'm still uh, a hardcore postal service patron and uh, mailing letters and something about receiving mail that aren't bills or advertisements or marketing uh, is something that really means a lot to me. And so over the years, I've uh, had many pen pals that I know and stay in touch with in that, um, in that modality. And so there was something about uh, saving the envelopes of every kind of correspondence that I received, or I would send a friend or family member a letter or a package and they would send something back. So these envelopes are the, the response to my correspondence since I believe about 2016. So, and some may say, well, what about the message? But the messages are, are savored and enjoyed, but this having the envelopes from so many different people show a certain unity, both visually and conceptually about my support system and about what care and what um, memory and, and nostalgia. And even though there's distance in between all these people uh, who send me these items in, in response, it, it shows that invisible, but yet tangibly made visible connection and support and love and, and relationship in, in, a, in a different way. And so um, my husband, I think uh, when, when we first uh, started dating, he's like, you collect things. And I said, yes. And I don't know why initially, but over time 
I'm able to understand that. I almost um, associate it with, why do you collect shells and stones on the beach when you go or out on a hike? You just, it's, it's almost like a transitional object. They provide a sense of comfort, even though you can't put your finger on it. Right. I, I, I can't help but notice that they were open very vigorously. <laughs> um, you didn't have a letter opener I take it and I never used one either um, I've never owned a letter opener and um, yeah I think I think that does maybe speak to me as a person is I, I care and I'm delicate in a lot of situations but letter opening is certainly not one of them well then you're excited to get a letter yes. I mean, I, I'm not going to look for a letter opener I'm going to open a letter right <laughs> okay we have one more installment we're going to share and then uh, we'll just kind of close here. I'm so appreciative of your comments and, and bringing it to what these Oh, it just drew me in. And uh, we'll bring this pretty close here so everyone can kind of get a feel of what it is. So you want to talk about this one? Sure. And this is where that concept, Edie, that you mentioned about mindfulness came up. And so um, I've been teaching and working at the University of Wisconsin River Falls for 10 years. And last year, uh, I assumed a, another position, uh, one of many. I have four different positions on campus um, because being an educator is a, a hard trade these days uh, because of budgeting. Uh, but we won't get into that. That's a whole different TED talk. Um, but I uh, assumed a position where uh, for the first time in my 10 years, my office had windows, which sounds barbaric almost to not have access to windows. Um, but I found myself in this new office that I'm in uh, two to three times a week where I'd catch myself in thought or if I needed to take a break, gazing out the window, which is on the third floor of a beautiful building uh, facing west, just cloud watching. And so uh, I started, taking uh, time-lapse images of these cloudscapes. And while I'm not ready to be a video installation artist yet, I found that just taking stills of these uh, time-lapses were able uh, to serve as, as moments of reflection of mindfulness and evidence of those mindfulness practices of just simply looking out the window. And that mindfulness, I believe, connects to these other pieces of artwork in this installation, especially it's poignant for the past year and a half as I've found that going back to work full time and going back to the status quo of pre pandemic is not sustainable and not healthy. And these moments of care and these moments of reflection and these moments of uh, trying to understand and find meaning in the everyday experiences are what provide me purpose and meaning. I do get to go home to my art studio every night. I do work in a sketchbook consistently on the daily. But when I'm not able to, and when I'm moving from the day to day and place to place and space to space, I need to find moments of connection to help me feel inspired, to feel grounded, to find purpose. Well, I, I'm with you. <laughs> and I talk to a lot of people, teachers and professional women and everybody who is starting to go back to work and it can be very stressful. So um, it's, I'm just excited because you're helping us bring this year to a close uh, with our gallery. And uh, the mindfulness is so important. And I think we all can sit back and, and reflect on, on different things and appreciate the day-to-day. -day. The mindfulness is yeah. thrilling. So I can't thank you enough, Anne, for giving Thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you so much to the Chestnut Center of the Arts and the community of Marshfield for allowing me to be a guest and a visitor and a part of that. Uh, and and uh, again, I just want to communicate how important and how valuable community art centers are, uh, no matter the size of the community, that uh, they're places for connection, for hope, for creativity, and for um, just wellness. So uh, thank you for all the work that you do and uh, the community that you serve. Well, thank you too. And we wish you the very best and we hope you have a great rest of the year. And we'll see you back at the end of the month. But uh, yes. thank you so much, Anne. Take thank care. Thank you so much. Bye now. Bye. There. Okay. I think we're good. That went well. I think you may still be recording. Are you still on? You can. You can uh, go off if you want to.
I, I just stopped the recording. I okay. Well, thanks again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did pause stop. Okay, are we good with the pause stop then? Do I need to do anything be. more after? And as, as soon as soon as you exit or leave the meeting, that video will pop up on your computer. Okay, it'll be recorded. Yep. And then would we be able to link that on our website, do you think? You should be able to upload it um, onto your website and onto Facebook. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, you're going to have some more installations in the next 10 years, right? Yes. <laughs> some more reflecting to do. Yes. That was great. Good Thank to see you. you. Thank you so hi. much. <laughs> have a great nice. rest of your day. Okay, you too. Enjoy the weather. It's not bad. It's very nice. So take yeah. care. Bye. Bye-bye.